Hello students, welcome to e-Patashala. I am G. Bhatma Priya from Avinash Lingam Deemed University, Coimbatore. So today we are going to discuss about academic crisis and let's start about introduction. So academic dis disorders affects how a person understands, remembers and responds to new information. People with academic disorders may have problems like listening or paying attention, speaking, reading, writing and doing maths. Although academic disorders occur in very young children, they are usually not recognized until the child reaches the school age. About one third of the children who have academic disabilities also have ADHD, which makes it hard to focus. Evaluation and testing by a trained professional can help identify the academic disorders. The other source is special education, which involves helping your child in the areas where he or she needs the most help. Sometimes tutors or speech or language therapists also work with the children. Though academic disorders cannot be treated completely, but various manipulative techniques and strategies can make less of a problem. Here we are discussing about the four important academic crises or attention deficit, hyperactive disorders, autistic disorders, learning dis disabilities, slow learners. Next objectives. To acquire the knowledge of academic disorders like ADHD, slow learners, learning disabilities and autistic disorder. Create awareness of disability as a social and cultural concept. To provide opportunities for students to build and practice skills needed to live a successful life. Attention deficit hyperactive disorder. So every one of us passed through the pleasant golden period of our childhood are characterized by restless, fidgety, playful and imagination. In this way, hyperactivity, the impulsiveness, troubled focusing, inattentiveness or distractibility are naturally present in the innocent behavior of our toddlers and young children. These are the age characteristics behavior which are usually left behind as they further grow in their age. However, it does not happen to some of the children for one or the other reason and as a result they are termed as being affected from attention deficit hyperactive disorders briefly known as ADHD. So now we can see the definitions. So attention deficit hyperactive disorder is medical diagnosis that is applied to children and adults who are experiencing significant behavior and cognitive difficulties in important aspects of their lives. These difficulties can be attributed to problems of impulse control, hyperactivity and inattention. It is believed that these problems are caused primarily by dysfunctions in the frontal lobes of the brain. So next we can see about the nature of the ADHD. It is quite chronic behavior or psychological disorders of childhood that may follow them to their adult years if not diagnosed and treated properly earlier. It may cause them experience significant behavioral and cognitive difficulties in their day-to-day -day life. Schooling and work situations are the different stages of their life. Parents and teachers cannot be blamed for this disorder because it is not caused by parental or school failures to disciplines or control the child. Although what causes ADHD is not known, yet the researchers believe that it is the result of through some deficiencies or dysfunctions of the brain caused through genetic inheritance or injury to the brain. Deficiency like deficits in certain chemicals called neurotransmitters and dysfunctions of certain lobes of the brain bring impairment in the controlling functions of the brain. Inability in exercising self-control may give birth to three major problems, particularly related to inattention, hyperactivity and impulsivity. The very hallmarks are symptoms of ADHD. Its presence in the children provides a big challenge to the parents and teachers in terms of its control and treatment. If not cared properly, it may cause unimaginable damage not only to the affected child but also may prove a source of danger to the well-being of the society. And now, diagnosis of the ADHD. Diagnosis of ADHD among the children is not a simple task. The children affected with ADHD do not differ significantly from normal children. With ADHD, inattention, hyperactivity and uh, impulsivity behaviors occur more vigorously and frequently far above the expectations of the developmental age causing difficulties in their day-to-day -day life activities at home school or other social situations. symptoms of inattention hyperactivity and impulsivity must be observed quite often in the day-to-day -day situations of the child persistently for a longer time at least six months since its inception before the age of six or seven all the children tend to be somewhat inattentive hyperactive and impulsive in the formative years. 
However, in case of such an inability is observed in the behavior of the grown-ups, say 9 or 10 years old, then it is certainly a matter of concern. Now we can see about the causes of ADHD. ADHD usually attributed to the following three types of factors. Neurological factors, genetic factors and environmental factors. Neurological factors. It is found that children with ADHD have organs like prefrontal and frontal lobes of the cerebrum. Basal ganglia and cerebellum are found to be structurally smaller in individuals with ADHD. In addition, these areas of the brain are found to have less activity and blood flow in the ADHD individual and has less total grey matters, brain tissues containing nerve cells and blood vessels and disturbances in the neurotransmitter. And next is genetic factors. Genetic factors or hereditary, hereditary influence are said to be the quite common cause of ADHD. It accounts for the 80% of the children with ADHD. And the next is the environmental factors. Brain injury, brain diseases such as encephalitis, a child may get affected by them at any time during the prenatal or postnatal stage, including the occasion of delivery. Complication during the pregnancy and birth, as a, such as toxemia. Fatal exposures to alcohol, smoking, drug abuse, or high levels of lead, both at pre and pronatal stages. Poor parenting and disruptive family life, poor schooling and defective management skills. Next, we can see about the treatment and education of the children with ADHD. The goal of any treatment come educational strategy for the children with ADHD essentially lies in helping the individual child lead a fulfilling fam happy life, building up his strength and talents and compensation for impairments imposed by ADHD. It is therefore very important to realize that ADHD is not something that can be cured but it can be treated and managed effectively. The best way of doing so is through multifaceted approach. It's called a multimodal plan of interventions tailored to the needs of the individual child and family. This typically includes a combination of medical, behavioral, psychosocial and educational interventions implemented as needed at different times in the children's and teens' life. The multifaceted approach as advocated above may then involve the cooperations of all those who are involved in the care, adjustments and education of the child for achieving the goal like parents, teachers, medical and health professionals. Counseling and education of the parents, family members, teachers and medical therapy and adaptation and structuring of the environment and behavioral therapy. And now let's see about the educational provisions for the children with ADHD. The children with ADHD need education for their adequate adjustments and progress in their life. The children with ADHD are generally placed in the integrated mainstream setup for their schooling along with the non-ADHD children. The children should be encouraged as to provide the children with ADHD better chance for getting along with other children. Competition coupled with more enriched educational experience. Alternative educational placement for example, special education or private school may be necessary for them. Individual attention and care is the best educational treatment that can be given to the children with ADHD. And the second topic we are going to see is autistic disorder. The meaning of autism. Most of our children naturally to follow a normal course of their development in terms of the speaking, language acquisition and interacting with their peers and family members. However, in some cases, the children instead of playing and socializing with others, isolates themselves in the world of their own, a place characterized by repetitive routines, odd and peculiar behavior, problems in communications and total lack of school, lack of social and emotional awareness and bonds with the others. The children characterized with such defective and improper developments are often referred as autism. Majority of these case studies have revealed that children with autism have onset before 30 months of age with normal physical development and good cognitive potential. Now the definitions of autism. Autism is a brain disorder that typically affects a child's ability to communicate, form relationship with the others and respond appropriately to the environment. Some children with autism are relatively high functioning with speech and intelligence intact. Others are mentally retarded, mute or have serious language delays. For some autism makes them seem closed off and shut down. There are others who seem locked into the repetitive behaviors and rigid pattern of thinking. So now we can see about the characteristics of autistic children. News in 1976 has described six frequently observed characteristics of children with autism. 
apparent sensory deficit. We may move directly in front of the child, smile and talk to him, yet he will act as a if no one is there. Severe affect isolation. Attempts to love and cuddle and show affection to the child encounter a profound lack of interest on the child's part. Self-stimulation. These children exhibit repetitive stereotyped acts such as rocking their bodies, twirling around, flapping their hands at the wrist or humming, tantrums and self-mutilatory behavior. The child sometimes bites himself to bleed. He beats his head against wall, beats his face with fist. Echolatic or psychotic speech. These children are mute, that is, they do not speak and utter any simple words. Repeat what you speak to them. So, behavior deficiencies. A 5 or 10 year old child may behave like a 1 year old child. And now we can see about the causes of autism. Recent research report and overwhelming evidence suggests that autism is neurological rather than a psychological disability and also denotes neuropsychiatric disorders. Although many explanations for the social, cognitive and linguistic symptoms of autism have been explored, the exact mechanism by which it operates is still not understood, yet the following causes have been speculated. Lack of interactions with cold and unresponsive parents, biological factors such as those related to pregnancy, and birth, genetics, neurology and biology, and neurochemical imbalance, pre and postnatal infection, chromosomal disorders, auditory impairments, central nervous system dysfunction. And now we can see about the intervention programs for autistic children. Early intervention and diagnosis always were fruitful to the children with autism. The parent should immediately consult a specialist for the early diagnosis of autism in their children and accordingly should take a step for the required early intervention. The following are the uh, intervention programs. Communication intervention in autism. Play therapy for language development. Behavioral approaches for speech, language and verbal training. Verbal training in mute nonverbal children. Speech language training in partially verbal and echolalic children. Developmental individual difference uh, relationship based model. Treatment measures for the autism. Medications and biochemical treatment. Sensory integration treatment. Facilitated communication treatment. Treatment involving modification and structuring of the environment. Treatment involving applied behavior and analysis. The third disorder is the learning disabilities. Learning disabled children are those who suffer from serious learning disabilities. These children exhibit exceptionally inferior capacities in terms of learning and understanding in comparison to the normal children of their age or class. In fact, learning disability is nothing but a sort of handicap or helplessness that can be felt by the sufferer in terms of his academic performance in the same way as experienced by a physically handicapped person in terms of his physical functioning or by a mentally handicapped in terms of his mental functioning. So definitions of learning disabilities. A child with learning dis disabilities is one with adequate mental ability, sensory process and emotional stability who has a limited number of specific deficits in perceptual, integrative or expressive process which severely impair learning deficiency. The characteristics of learning disabled. The problems and disorders are usually manifested by significant difficulty in the acquisition and use of language, reasoning or mathematical ability or of a social scale. They may exhibit symptoms of hyperactivity and attention deficit. The term currently used to describe these combination of behavioral traits is attention deficit hyperactive disorder. They may be found to demonstrate the symptoms of impulsivity. They demonstrate the symptoms of perceptual motor deficit in the shape of poor and erratic performance in writing, drawing, copying, geometrical figures and handling instruments and appliances. Most of them suffer from emotional problems and demonstrate signs of anxiety, moodiness or ups and downs in their behavior. The learning disability is not apparent in the physical appearance or not demonstrates through their IQ scores. They may have robust body, good vision, sound ears and normal intelligence. They may exhibit disorders of memory, thinking, attention, general coordination, perception and motor functioning. 
They are handicapped in learning and acquisition in the same way as physically handicapped. Lack of motivation, inattention, inability to generalize, lack of adequate ability in problem solving, information processing and thinking skills. Causes of learning disabilities. Genetic and hereditary factors. Organic and physiological factors. And environmental factors. The first one is the genetic or hereditary factor. Learning disabled or transmitted from generation to generation. Reading disabilities and speech and language disorders in monozygotic twins, that is twins with same age, than in zygotic twins, that is twins from the two different eggs. There is a growing evidence that heredity may account for at least some family linkage with dyslexia. Genes connected to chromosomes. Genes connected to chromosomes 6 and chromosomes 15 are said to play a role in the hereditary transmission of reading disabilities and the second one is organic or physiological factors. Learning disabled children suffer from neurological dysfunction, small functioning or dysfunction of their central nervous system consisting of brain, spinal cord and message carrying nerves etc. Brain damage caused by an accident or by a lack of oxygen before and during the and after birth. Artificial colorings and flavorings in many of the food items consumed by the children may cause hyperactivity, impulsivity, emotional imbalance, etc., leading to malfunctioning of the central nervous system. Vitamin deficiency may cause inability of the child's blood stream to synthesize their normal amounts of vitamin essential for the normal functioning of the central nervous system. So now let's discuss about the remedial measures for learning disabilities. Using manipulative exercise to strengthen muscles. Helping them to learn a proper position and form for writing. Sufficient practice can be provided through manipulative activities as well as through individualized assistance. Spelling problems. Start framing a list of words usually misspelled by a child or make the child learn the correct spelling. For reading problems should be provided with a model reading or a recording device may be used for this purpose. Use of stories, narration of personal experience, oral discussion. Use of necessary multimedia facilities, etc., prove useful in overcoming with such deficiencies. Teach language in a purposeful context and use conversation to promote language development. Use self talk and parallel talk to describe what you and others are doing and thinking. The fourth one we are going to discuss is slow learners. In our classroom and also as a whole in our school setup, we strongly hold to a system that yields a one size fits all type model for the education of all children irrespective of their individual difference widely observable in terms of the rate of learning educational achievements. The usual classroom teaching mostly designed for the normal averages. They always lag behind in terms of catching the usual pace of the class study and consequently suffer in terms of their educational progress and academic achievements. They are often seen to suffer from educational failures by playing truancy, repeating the grade or class or leaving the school education in between as a dropout. Characterized with a lower rate of learning and educationally backward children. So now the definition for slow learners. Slow learners are the students with below average cognitive abilities who are not disabled but who struggle to cope with the traditional academic demands of the regular classroom. The characteristics of slow learners on the basis of the research studies conducted in the recent years, certain general characteristics of the slow learners are listed below. Physical characteristics Slow sensory motor development They take time to make progress such as walking, self-feeding and language development. More reaction time They take more time to respond to stimulus like visual and auditory. Defect in vision and hearing speech They find it difficult to discriminate between color and size. Intellectual characters Low memory, lack of concentration, poor attention span, fail to retain what they have learned, poor ability in the formation of concept and general ideas, unable to plan and work on their own, and poor in creativity, critical thinking, low intelligent caution, lack of abstract thinking and reasoning ability, educational characters, poor language ability like reading, writing, spelling skills, have negative attitude towards learning, they have slow academic achievements. Social and moral character. Lack of stamina to sit in a class for a long time. Fail to make friends not at all sociable. Afraid and self-conscious. 
daydream and make good adjustments in non academic pursuit causes of slow learner physiological factors physical retardation poor health lack of vitality and victims of poor environment and thus suffer from physical ailment chronic disease and bodily effect defects intellectual factors some children are born with some inherent deficits in their brain system or with some intellectual subnormality economic conditions the economic status of the family also plays a major role in the child's learning the family which is economically fit will provide better opportunities for the children than that of a poor family environmental causes children who lack sufficient environmental stimulation usually fail to develop at a normal rate school influence poor children conditions like ineffective method of teaching lack of efficient and qualified teachers bad examination and evaluation system improper curriculum and improper classroom climate influence of neighborhood and other social agencies the members of the society he comes in contact with the press radio cinema clubs and religious and social places that he visits all contribute to the problems of educational subnormal now the treatment and educational measures of slow learners regular medical checkup and necessary treatment readjustments at homes and school provisions for special school for segregated setup with special coaching and individual attention provision for special curriculum methods of teaching and special teachers provision for co-curricular activities rich experience and diversified diversified courses controlling negative environmental factors taking the help of experienced educational psychology now the conclusion part of the academic crisis in this way proper effort can be made for the desired care treatment and progress of the children with academic disorders through a collaborated approach involving effective medications behavioral and educational interventions the overall attitude of the people in the world regarding academic disorders need a big change the lack of awareness and proper diagnosis of academic disorder has made quite number of countries and people at this stage too away from the attempts of fighting with this dreadful disorders there is a real need of awakening of our masses including the government agencies for taking due recognitions of the academic disorders in the children and have all the possible diagnostic and treatment measures for its prevention and treatment